Information. If you look it up, there's two definitions. One says it's like words and stuff, but it, it's actually a process. You go through a process of information, of being informed how they want you to be formed. Like the cast. These casts work well within this picture, so if we could all just look like that and act like that, that would be great. But what we've been talking about, the 100 Human Experience, is about transformation. It's about saying, this is the form that I am, and I want to go beyond that. And I don't know what the f it fucking is. But I'm not going to listen to someone telling me what it is. I'm going to do the opposite of tell, which is let. Tell. Let. It happen. To let it happen through the process. To trust the process. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. So we're reflecting on the 100 Human Experience. It was a very powerful event for 100 humans to dive deep into the crevices of what it means to be human, to move in ways that are more in sync with our biology, to breathe, connect to some altered states, to get into cold and meet our edges, dance, express, and explore those kind of outer layers and inner layers of what it means to be human. So I'm joined by the character Jay and Nina sits in for this one, and we really reflect on what the experience was about, physical, but also the emotional side of of what the event really did for us and uh it's a powerful episode i hope you enjoy and yeah a bit more about the character jay he's uh he's got a background in acting teaching actors in theater and yeah he uh he really captivated me with some of this language and his uh, kind of passion his introspect for for words and language and uh understanding where the roots are with the words that we speak. Appreciate your time. Hope you enjoy. If you find this valuable, please subscribe and uh, hit that like button. Do the podcast. Hmm. So, Aho again. Wow. Yeah, oh. I was going to call you Jeff. Thank then. you. <laughs> Jay. Not known, we're saying, uh, well, Jeff is so here present with us in this. Yeah, sorry, and to Jay. <laughs> oh, sorry, and to Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> All the Jays. Um, All the Jays. The character Jay. Mm. Character Jay. Mm. Yeah, so and we've got Nina here, mm -hmm. the host of the Deep and Meaningfuls. <laughs> so it's kind of like a body mind practice meets Deep and Meaningfuls. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, why not? Yeah, because we, well, we have the pleasure of being here together in this unbelievable setting and to have met you at the event this weekend. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's, it's a blessing to be on the road and to be able to be free spirited and nomadic and flow. And we made our way so naturally here. Mm -hmm. It was just. Yeah, and take really the audience with you. I guess that was a big mm. intention of like, you know, what kit I'd get and what kind of conversations I'd have. It was always like that I could travel with it and just pop up anywhere and just outdoors, shoot a conversation. And that was a big intention for the for the podcast. So, yeah, this is, this is how it was meant to be. That's great. Mm. Here we are on the roof of a boat. Yeah. So, yeah. Doing the thing. Let's, mm. let's give some people some context, I think, first of all, of the 100 human experience, which was on the 5th and 6th of April. 2nd and 3rd. 2nd and 3rd. 2022 of April for those <laughs> <laughs> the oracle knows yeah. if you need to know <laughs> yeah Nina will be correcting me throughout no I won't <laughs> <laughs> it's weird though because I put that up on when I put the exact dance playlist online and uh, I put 56 I don't know why that was it's weird mm. Mm. I love that you even corrected him that you're not going to be correcting him throughout yeah. it <laughs> 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 no way <I> <laughs> thanks Jay <laughs> I'll just correct you there I'll be the arbiter of this. I've, I'm going to keep a little score. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it will all be legitimate each time, though. Mm. <laughs> mm. So, 100 Human Experience. Yeah. Um, brought to you by Tony Riddle and Arta Paulins, who were the initial starters and creators of Move, Breathe, Chill, mm -hmm. which uh, people that follow me, to be honest, they, they will know. I post about it all the time. Um, it's, that was... a uh, Oh, 2019, before the pandemic, 
that must have been 2018, right? When they started to move Beef Hill Chills, because I went to the first one. 2018, they did a couple in London, recentre, and mm. then obviously everyone, uh, you know, got kind of sidelined for a, a few years. And now, uh, in when was the first 100 Human? It was last, mm -hmm. end of last year, and this was the second. And let's define, let's just share, maybe go around, share some mm -hmm. things of what it really, because it's hard to describe these experiences. You know, you know, you say to people, 100 human experience, sure, that says how many people were there, but it's like, what, what is it? You know, talking to people who have no idea of like what movement, breathing, you know, cold exposure, what that even looks like. Mm. So these are the kind of move breathe chill that was kind of like the foundations of it obviously it's it, it's it's evolved and uh there's been many different things that have been brought into this so this was like a festival but with 100 humans so like a retreat similar but you wouldn't call it that mm -hmm. it was 100 people getting together and this would be my kind of summary of what it is about i'd say to to move in ways that are more in sync with our biology to connect to ways that are also more aligned with us as humans so there's mo moving as intentional breath work to you know produce certain states and to introspect mm -hmm. and there's cold exposure which is a beautiful practice to you know develop resilience to get into the uncomfortable zones and overcome something very very challenging Mm -hmm. and this time Tony took it up a notch and it was overnight Jeff as we mentioned he hosted the cacao ceremony we also had Kate Lister who was coming on the podcast in a couple of weeks she did a voice activation workshop which was actually at one of the move brief chills mm -hmm. so she's been with with the kind of uh, yeah evolution of it and she did a voice activation workshop which I think we could touch upon that a bit later because that was just super powerful and it's mm. you can't really sum that up, <laughs> I don't mm. think. <laughs> um, and then uh, me and Nina hosted a, an ecstatic, d ecstatic dance, which was super intentional and, yeah, moving with music uh, as a practice and as a opportunity to, to grow and let go of certain things mm. and uh, do it in such a sacred held space. But again, saying all those things, these like, you know, we, we bring our own baggage to what all these certain things that I've just mentioned would, would be or what they look like. But when you're in a beautiful setting, it was in the Magical Foresters, which is a, a Christmas tree sanctuary slash farm uh, in Bromley, South London. And yeah, it w we, we bring our own ideas to what all that looks like. But being there with these people it was just from the off, just so open and so just genuine people coming to to learn, to explore, to just open themselves up to just the possibility of what would unfold. That there's no structure, this is a really important point to make actually, that like there's no structure to the event. There's no, you know, this will happen here, this will happen at this time. It's a very free-flowing, more genuinely, I guess, natural way of way of interacting with the world. So if things come up, things take longer. It's just very much more in flow in that way, mm. and that's a that's a really important point because that really uh, allows the experience to just unfold in 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 a way that you can never predict. So how can you put that on paper? Like this is what's going to be unfolding. It's like a it's just a unique, I think every one of these things will be unique. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've only ever been to anything quite like it. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there have been similar things and I've done all the, the things that we did there on paper before, but yeah, it's quite a unique uh, unfolding, really. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I've said a, a bit there. Mm. Nina, Nina, did you wanna I just wanna in? say, you set the scene for what was done, the doing part, mm. the activity part. Yeah, I think mm. that's important. And absolutely, and it's like there was there was those activities, and there was those spaces held. And yes, we all have the different ways that we that we feel about those things. And there was it was interesting to witness there was kind of a real split of 
of um, people that had done those sorts of activities before and then there was 50% that had never done anything like that before or there was 50% that had done a cacao ceremony before and a ecstatic dance before but maybe not the ice water immersion and so it was this real blend of first time stepping forward leaning in and try and trying new things and it's when we try new things and step out of our comfort zones or our ideas or stories that we have a tra transformational experience and we meet our edges and for me that's what the event was really it was like meeting the external edges the physicality there was a lot of physical stuff going on I mean I was aching for days after the event um, but then there was an internal edges people really meeting with their vulnerability and their inner world and meeting those edges too and and the space that was created there and Tony's Tony's radical authentic honesty you know it's it's playful but it's also yeah like it's it's I'm gonna hold he calls himself the papa bear and it's like I've got you we're all together in this we're going on a journey together and it was the first time that it had been overnight and over a weekend and for me the magic was what happened in the being around the doing of the activities when everybody was just landing and letting go and having authentic connection and when the m intuitive moments arose of like how things were gonna flow then we were like in an ecosystem all of us you know moving as 100 humans and then moving with the time scale of what felt right you know we were originally going to do the dance in the morning for example on the sunday and there was a couple of people that were like oh, i really need this dance to be in the morning because they needed the energy everyone had barely slept through baltic crazy temperatures and people some people were like yeah the dance is in the morning and it was like oh no we're cha we've changed it because um i'd actually had a powerful visualization through the breath work the day before of of really visualizing how to hold the space for everyone what was needed to be received at that time and I said to, I said to Tony I was like we're gonna have to do it. you know Chris spoke to him was like, we're gonna have to do it I feel like it needs to be later on in the day it needs to kind of be a consolidation a celebration of all the elements come together of people to go on that journey with themselves um, and he was just like yeah okay let's do it let's change it up and that was what was beautiful it was and we were all enabled to to go in and with the flow of the whole event and um it was beautiful to to hold space and have space held that was really beautiful and to be yeah connected with so many like-minded people and then also people of all walks of life all mm. ages We've got to mention Claire, 74 year old Claire that really arrived and gave all of herself and, you know, was was a joyful expression of so many people saying, like, oh, I hope I'm at events like this when I'm when I'm Claire's age and, you know, getting involved in everything. And I think it was for me beautiful to just witness the willingness of everyone to to participate to show up to be part of that ecosystem of moving hundred humans moving through the magic of foresters and um, and I feel immensely grateful to have been a part of it so yeah that's that's what I'm gonna bring into this moment and uh, yeah what about EJ uh, well I can only really echo a lot of what you guys have said um but then of course I, I i wasn't i hadn't been involved in the first iteration of this and and um was seeing it from a different lens as mm. arriving as an individual um what knowing mm. what brought you there no first one of all? Mm. um what, what, what brought me there um so i've sort of been on, on a journey myself for for a while, um, which is about um, this quest to discover, because it's there, it's just covered, what, what the depths of humanity, like like how how human can we possibly be? Mm. 
and how closed off have we been into small little corners or versions of humanity that we think are acceptable and socially acceptable um, and I've been interested in this for a while um, and have worked for um, 10 years really training training actors to act mm. to um, act with to speak with truth mm. and to move with purpose and to always check what what is my character doing here what does my character want in this particular scenario and constantly checking in with that and and we go it's quite meticulous um my audio just cut out there mm -hmm. oh. fine cool the back yeah um there's a meticulous process to go through when you're training actors mm. and for a, for a while i've realized what we're doing is we're training humans to be humans. Mm. Speaking with truth, mm. like resonating with the fullness of your being, with your voice. Not like making yourself small and speaking from here, which I've done most of my life. And I think a lot of people can agree with that <coughs> or will relate to that. Mm. So anyway, I've been on this quest myself, left the arts a couple of months ago, really, um, after wow. working for a long time to take a year off and to really explore this and to, to try out some of my ideas, which is applying um, the same techniques that we normally apply to fictional stories to our lives and to ourselves. And at some point, and I don't know when I discovered Tony, but I found him <laughs> on online, on YouTube, and he was talking about... And I might have searched for rewilding movement or something because it feels like the next phase for me is like about my body and uh, and I'm quite um, uh, yeah I'm interested in in how much more embodied I can be um, and uh, what does that entail and when I listen to his story and about his journey of running the length of the UK but also talking about the different ways in which the shoe industry has shaped how we now stand or don't stand correctly mm -hmm. the, the shoe spiracy the shoe spiracy I've not heard this have you not seen that no did you do watch that yeah uh, <laughs> has he made one no, no, well, no. Well, he, well he did make a documentary about the, the three bare peaks that he did um, the other year which was what not last year year before 2020 mm -hmm. and the shoe spiracy is I think it's, it's made by Vivo Viva Barefoot. Okay. So, yeah, this yes was like is. a v Viva Barefoot convention as well, this this event, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. But, yeah, it uh, it just goes to shoe you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, that the shoe spiracy is, it is, we've been sold a, we've been sold a lie. And, and I do say that to people, I'm like, yeah, you have been lied to of what has been like, oh, this is a shoe that's going to do this, 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 and it's going to be good for you. Uh, of course, you're selling a product that they're saying it's going to be good for you. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a big metaphor for the modern day, isn't it? Of how like certain mm. systems, certain structures are are molding us into shapes that we're not. Uh, it's it's a cast, a cast for the foot, a cast for the mind, cast for the you know, cast a for cage. the body, a cage, sure, box. You know, <laughs> I love that though, a cast because yeah, yeah it's both like. You talk about a plaster mm. cast. Mm. There's a mould and we're being yeah. poured into this mould, but it's also a cast in a show, in a play. Ooh. Uh -huh. like to be cast as something is to be cast in a particular shape. Mm. Mm. And you and in it within a play, then yeah. you then play that particular role. And this is what I'm interested in. It's mm. like, who writes the plays that we act out in? Right. Who casts me? And what do I allow myself to be cast in? And are there other shapes that I can expand into? Mm. Mm. And that's what I was interested in about the 100 human experience. Uh, about Because f like we, we don't know the limits of what we are until we 
play outside of them. Totally. And play has to be kind of exploring the edge of what is known. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it needs that quality of play, mm-hmm. I find. And that's what Tony just brings in just abundance. I mean, that you know, I, I arrived and the first thing I did was put my hand out. It's this raining, is amazing. This We're is being blessed. snowing. We're Hello. being blessed. Hi, Weather. <laughs> Thanks for co- joining the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this You're happened welcome. at the event as well, which is why this is so brilliant. It was like yeah. sunny and snowy. <laughs> Yay. I think the cameras will be fine. Yeah. yeah. What do we reckon? We're, we're fine. fine. We're going to run the experiment. <laughs> 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 See where it takes us. So, yes. Um, so, the 100 Human Experience called you for that. No. For the edges. For the snow that was there yes. and the minus temperatures. And, uh, you know, when I arrived... I put my hand out because I recognised Tony. I put my hand out to, to to shake his hand, and the first thing I could see him negotiating was, "Do I hug from this side or from that side?" <laughs> and I was like, "I like this guy." <laughs> he was kind of like this. I was like, "All right, mate, come on." Yeah. Um, and I never met him. And yeah. um, this uh, after coronavirus and all of the shapes that we've been asked to stand in, mm. and uh, the stories that we've been asked to like live in and, and mm-hmm. act out. Um, uh, yeah, I almost feel quite emotional about it. I, I think it's it's really our humanity has been really Oof. stunted mm. and Oof. cut off right at the root, uh, which is about connection mm. and trust. Mm. Um, and there's so many people, including myself, who've experienced I think recently social anxiety. This mm. thing that's called social anxiety, and actually what it is, it's it's like it's what it feels like mm. to be in the presence of other humans because mm. <laughs> we've all got. You know, mm. we we all kind of carry a frequency, and when there's so many frequencies in one room, it can be hard to mm. uh, to negotiate and to gel. Mm. And, and if I you're sensitive to that, yes, exactly. We are sensitive beings, if we allow ourselves to be, and it can manifest as the feeling of social anxiety. But really, it is like the surge of energy of when other humans come together, right? Yeah. Mm. And this is it. And most of us are cut off from like there down. Mm. So so the voice is taken away. All feeling is taken away. Mm. And, and we're not speaking from mm. the wholeness of ourselves mm. and in tune with everything that's going on. Mm. Mm. And that's what I just w- I wanted to um, go towards, go towards that which is uncomfortable, which is submerging, <laughs> like submerging oneself in ice <laughs> voluntarily with a bunch of strangers. <laughs> like that so was that the insane. thing for you? Uh, that, that um, I wanted to see what Tony would bring um, mm-hmm. in terms of his his movement yeah. stuff, and um, it was great. Mm. Yeah, it was great yeah. to run. Two around. hours just flash by. Yeah, running around as a- as mammals, basically, oh. mm-hmm. at which we are. Mm-hmm. And I think we can get these ideas that eh, we're like human again. Eh, we're up here, so yeah, well, all right. <laughs> we're also mammals. Yeah. Also, tiger, tiger, tiger. <laughs> Yeah, you'd only know if you were there. Yes. But, yeah. If you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that got bringing back to what you just said, for me, it's the conformity or it's that, that urge and that primal to belong to. There's so much of that, shifting those shapes and, and casting out, sometimes our own cast to want to belong and mm. will not want to be the first one on the dance floor. Mm. You want to conform, but at this it didn't change throughout straight away people came through the doors and the gates you know it's all outdoors there's no doors (laughs) and they come through and everyone's like boom hugging straight in open honest all walks of life and that's what i think is so beautiful about this it's not like a certain type of people it's not like a certain type everyone Mm. was off in the you know people from all over the world really Mm -hmm. uh and doing different things it's not just like um one yeah one type of type of uh person just subscribing to something it was just so many individual people coming to explore their humanness and Mm -hmm. as you so rightly said like exploring those edges and just going outside of them like hearing hearing you say on that uh the, the the conversation that you'll be releasing on your YouTube channel about play and, and and when animals play they do explore they'll see like what they can get away with and that's been a theme mm. of my life like what can I wh- where are the lines where are the boundaries and why are they there mm. like p- 
pressing those edges. And I think that's what, what happens in this circle of 100 humans. It's like we are really exploring the edges with our voice, with our bodies, with our sh with our size of us, our shapes. It's just like how loud can we be and how safe can that be witnessed and held? Mm. The, the lack of judgment is just phenomenal. And it's... It doesn't just happen, though. It doesn't just happen. It people just like Claire bring it forward. Mm. There's certain types of people, and I'm sh yeah. sure you can touch upon it. Um, there's certain types of people that just, yeah, Claire, obviously, 74, I've been for a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know her story. We will get her on the podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, like, she just bought herself. And, like, in any moment, she would just express and be, and that gives so many people the permission mm. to then be themselves. And it doesn't take many people to, to f for that to kind of envelope, you know. Mm -hmm. But people need the permission mm -hmm. people do that and th there's there's a couple of ways it can happen one is kind of by osmosis by someone like Ooh, claire just just being on her mission being per her mission and everyone's like oh i can do that as well mm. oh oh that's oh I, oh it doesn't no one's looking at no one's judging me because mm -hmm. actually anytime we think that it's because there's a little bit of ourselves that might judge someone else who's doing mm. that um so that's one, is by osmosis and by being around people who are just embodying it. Mm. But like I said to, to you guys when I walked up at the end of the session, like mm. it was really, really well held. And mm. that's not an easy thing to do. Mm. And to look around the room and see a hundred people dancing like no one's looking mm. and really releasing mm. with intention, mm. um, that's a skill. You know, that that's a real skill. And... I thought you guys did so excellently with that. Um, and you're not the only ones that, that weekend. There was, there was fine examples of just allowing and gently, because, you know, when people arrive, it's like you don't know what stories they've got. You don't know where they've just come from, what's just bloody happened on the way, the phone call they just had to deal with, the thing that almost dragged them away. There's so mm -hmm. much that we've all just, we arrive with. Mm -hmm. And there's a real skill that it takes to facilitate just gently letting go of that and running around like tigers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, what sort of Tony said, mm. both physically what was happening and metaphysically was the delayering as the time went on. So the layers of clothing, as we were all warming up, you know, it was like people were literally whew, stripping off their stripping off their layers, and then there was the actual delayering of the masks or the you know the suits that we wear to move around in to to show up in a certain way maybe even if it's for our family or the like you said the story and the things that came before and it's the process of of delayering and coming back to center that takes you know it does take yes it takes permission and I really want you to share what you shared with us around permission okay. what permission means because that's beautiful and yeah you know we haven't said that jay is a wordsmith and <laughs> <laughs> i think they figured it out by now that's how we <laughs> met jay and i also have a an absolute love of words and the meaning of words so um so that permission to permission to play permission to release permission to let go permission to open a different door that gives a different perspective or a new lens but that comes through the other because we're all walking around in our own echo chambers, right? And we're all walking around with our own stories and our own pasts and our own experiences. And that's why when we come together with others that give us, that hold that space and give that permission, that's when we transform and we expand and we recognize what's possible. I just also just, that's when we can change the, the, the story. That's when we can rewrite the story. It was like during the, at the end of the breath work, do you remember the lady that, that said, you know, when Arta asked to share and she sort of said, you know, I realized I want to quit my job. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone was like cheering because that's how powerful it can be. Yeah. <laughs> and and you know like, what? If there's a hundred people and one person yes. realized they need to quit that fucking job. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be one of the other 99 and just hold that. And, and be, be like, like yes. Yeah. And of course that wasn't, the only thing that was achieved was, no. you know, there was no. people were really touching parts mm. of themselves mm. by breathing, mm -hmm. by breathing. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. You do it all the time mm-hmm. without thinking about it. Yeah. And yeah. this for me is actually kind of one of the deep levels of what was going on uh, on, on the weekend. You can look at the surface level stuff and we talked about that at the beginning. What a- you know, what happened? Okay, mm. uh, they did that and they did that and they did that. And okay, good. I can make a list of all those things, yeah. you know. It's on the website. It's you on the website. You yeah. can. <laughs> There's <laughs> bullet points. <laughs> they didn't happen in the right order. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, but I, I think, well, in fact, just I'm going to go off on that tangent mm. um, and then I'll come back. You said... There wasn't a structure to it. Mm. There was a structure. Sure. Mm-hmm. There was definitely a structure. <laughs> it was very well thought out. And, uh-huh. and the right people were pulled together to deliver it. What happened was it was allowed to be organic. Mm. Because nothing exists outside of context and environment. And mm. We are contextual and beings. We're a hundred like human organisms with stuff going on. And it's like, oh, right, we thought it would be this, but it actually it's this. And that is... Um, a real skill as well mm. I think so hats off to you guys and to yeah. Tony for, for really just allowing that like oh no it needs to be this it needs to be this and seeing the thing and how it wants mm-hmm. to be and yeah. facilitating mm-hmm. its birth almost mm-hmm. you know as it's happening mm-hmm. yeah Tony's very good at that it's mm-hmm. the, for me it's that discipline versus surrender mm. and when to let go of that mm. and the whole experience for me was all about all about letting go there was mm. so much exhaling going on. Mm. <laughs> I was like, are we breathing in as much as we're letting go? But like uh, th- every out breath, it was almost like that synchronized for me, that synchronized all the different things that we did. And it was just constant. I was like, how much more have I got? You know, mm. things here, there that I've not looked at. Can I let that go? Mm. And like stretching those limits of my like self, which feels so tr- like in me, but it's like, Mm. Most of it's in my head, but it manifests in the body. So you're like, I'm letting it go through through my exhale, and that for me was phew, one of the biggest things. Mm. And I I do find you find the gold in the weirdest places when you mm. go through this experience. Either you know, n- not just this, but other events that I've been to. Sometimes my expectation is, oh, when I do that thing, it's going to be amazing. And sometimes it's like, yeah. I'm like. Oh, I'm getting really worked up about something. What's that about? Mm. Ah, this is my lesson. <laughs> it's like it's between all the events. It's because of my mm-hmm. assumption that something would happen, and now it's not. I'm like, oh, hello, bit of me that wants to control things. This is nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thanks, thanks event for, the for like shining the light on that bit yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. and letting me to see that. And now I can invite myself to let go. That, um, that was probably Nina in the ice bath. Taking a second dip. Oh, taking a second dip. Well, you invite, you've invited me into the cold, really. And so for me, there is always resistance whenever I go into the cold in the North Sea or, you know, it is, it is an invitation to overcome resistance and surrender. Every part of me is often uncomfortable and then I, I'm, you're always in first and then I'm always like, oh gosh, I have to go in. <laughs> and um, But I do it, I do it and I feel it and I receive the beautiful benefits. There was something about the ice though that was like the surrender was faster the thoughts were not there, the drumming, the energy of everyone else, the the collective power. And I think the first time we went into the ice, being asked to drum everyone into that space, and it is a rite of passage. I was saying that to everyone, it's a rite of passage. There are not enough moments in our human experience nowadays that are rites of passage, and I believe going into the ice in that state, that uncomfortable, the resistance, the part that the, where the fear arises from to then overcome and step out anew. And that first experience of going into the ice really was quite uh, effortless and energized by the collective energy. And I felt really grateful to be going into the ice having walked everyone down there and then the second day it felt colder and after the minus three at night after the minus three at night but it felt I felt so 
I just felt so ecstatic. I genuinely felt super ecstatic. I think it just was like, yeah, let's just do it again. The oh, second like day, <laughs> it felt different, didn't it? Yeah. At th- it was just more chaotic in mm. a great pff, way. Everyone would just let go of a whole load yeah. more yeah. stuff. The, the ceremony went, it's like, right, get in, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to get wet and cold? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's interesting. For, uh, I wonder, those who've not done something like this before might be thinking, why? Like, wh- why the hell would you bother voluntarily going into a bucket full of ice mm. with a load of strangers mm-hmm. what, what, what are you going to gain from that mm. and um, I think you touched on it before Nina which is that well there's <laughs> life is full of stuff that is not nice mm-hmm. that we don't want to have to deal with mm-hmm. yet we have to like it comes along and it's not voluntary when it does Mm. And then it's like, well, how am I going to be in those situations? Yeah. Am I going to be like, oh, I don't like it. Oh, I want it to stop. It's like, well, I could. It's not very useful, though. It's not useful for me. It's not useful for anyone else around me. Um, but I can take responsibility. And for me, this is about learning how to take responsibility when there's parts of yourself that are like, no. Oh. It's like, well, actually, when I really tune in with them, they're not like that. They're actually okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) if I take control. Mm -hmm. And if I decide what is in my control of all the things, there's loads that's out, what can I control? And sometimes it's the most fundamental bloody thing. It's my breath. Mm. It's my breath. And I I just need to... And and the the thing that Arthur was was telling us, kept bringing us back to... And he said this, and this is fantastic advice for life, actually, that if someone is in a situation where they're, you know, they're stressing out, don't tell them to breathe. Because <laughs> they're going, <laughs> they're already probably doing it. They're breathing. Tell them to breathe deeply. They go, <gasps> <coughs> no, you don't. You tell them to breathe out. Exhale. Exhale. Mm. Well, what, what about breathing in? You know how to do that. <laughs> that will happen. And... Mm. For me, it's about focusing on, like you said, letting go, releasing. I will receive whatever the gifts will be. My body knows how to do that. But giving. Mm. (laughs) It's that that process of giving. Literally, Mm. breathing on a pattern level is is receiving and giving. Mm -hmm. Receiving and giving. Mm -hmm. Receiving and giving. And to deal with a situation that's out of your depth... How much can I give to this? Mm-hmm. Not how much can I get from it. Mm-hmm. It's like, no. You mm-hmm. just, it's like, how much can I give? And mm-hmm. where are my resources? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah. I'm talking, this is an intellectual level that we're talking about, but yeah. doing these experiences is, is the embodied understanding of that. That when there's every part of my being screaming, no, I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you got this. Mm-hmm. And so that was powerful. And uh, it was really nice seeing Tony posted a picture yesterday, actually. Uh, I was on one of them in the ice bath. Yeah. And I was like, I look so relaxed. <laughs> but I look, yeah, and I was. I was like, this is fun, isn't it? <laughs> sort of looking around at the weirdness of this situation that I, I'm not out of my depth here. I'm full mm. full, fully in control. And Arthur had just run like a half an hour workshop with us, you know, before that. Mm. So that's the kind of magic of mm-hmm. these you know, wonderful facilitators who've been who've been working on one specific area of what it is to be a human for a very long time and really focused on that. Mm. And they said, let's get together because I've only got this bit, you've got that bit. What happens if we bring it together? The movement bit and the, the breathing bit and, and then the intention bit mm. and the like letting go bit as well because that's what I really got from your session as well mm. that another form of giving is just like allowing it to go and like mm. holding on to stuff and from the outset you could look at a bunch of people dancing in a tent and say oh well yeah they're having fun aren't they and I think yeah the fun was happening but or and not but mm-hmm. and other stuff was happening as mm-hmm. well 
um, mm -hmm. because the invitation had been to like, well, let's decide what we're going to let go of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And know that actually we're probably holding on to shit and we don't even know what we're holding on to. Because mm -hmm. our body does that. It does that. It holds on. Mm -hmm. And everyone, th people are waking up to this so much. The mm. body keeps the score, you know, mm -hmm. all of this. Um, it's kind of what I want to talk to you guys a little bit in depth later because what I see, what you're sort of weaving together is quite ancient mm. in mm. some ways. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 this practice of, of having a unified rhythm that everyone, uh, that everyone moves to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, also having an intention to transform. Mm -hmm. You're talking about that actually, transforming. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm going to bring in my <laughs> word stuff here. I want you to talk on permission. As permission. Also, yeah, okay. permission as to, to yeah. transform. Don't ask. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so you gave us permission. Transform. You mm. gave us permission. And I think what I said to you guys after the dance was um, a lot of people get permission to dance like that through a little pill mm -hmm. you know which takes away mm -hmm. inhibitions mm -hmm. um, but we've put those up there <laughs> like they've been built into us and we've built all of those walls so in order for people to really let go there needs to be some level of pill mm. uh, and that is permission and it happened you gave us that by just framing it really and saying this is not about you know, you're g going to a to a club to meet a Tinder date. This is your chance and an invitation. And yeah. it wasn't like you must let go of shit right now and <laughs> transform into the best. You know, it's just like here's an opportunity. Mm. Yeah, that's what I said at it. the end. I was like, you'll get many more opportunities in life, but this is one of them. Yeah, it's up to you mm -hmm. uh, in this moment. But it's such an opportunity to give it your everything. Yeah. And there will be more. No, there's no pressure. It's not like this is your final chance, but uh, it's a big, big opportunity. Yeah. And it, it's there. Uh, yeah. I think you've just given us our name for our uh, ecstatic dance uh, oh yeah. event. What's that? Permission. Permission. Mm. Or B, I love that. B permission. So yeah, this is what yeah to tie it up. It's like we we're constantly asking for permission from someone else. Can I do this? Is this allowed outside? External like a child. Or like external. a child. Mm. Is this okay? You know, um, <laughs> when if yeah. you are per your mission, then you are attending to the needs that are there, mm. whether it's within or without. It doesn't matter. Needs need to be met. Right. Mm -hmm. So and I say this very carefully because it's not like we never ask permission. Like when we're involving any other human being, if you're engaging with them in certain mm. way where permission is involved, of course, there's permission. But it's when we're dealing with ourselves, we can often put brakes on mm -hmm. to stop ourselves from just even trying something which is outside of the norm because, like, we think, but well, for no bloody reason wow. other than it's yeah. unknown. We think it's not for us. Yeah. We have an idea of us, of who we are. We have the idea of the story that that's not for me. I don't do that. I think I just want to say... When you were saying, you know, that idea of getting into the ice and what it would be like for people who were like considering attending and they read the different things that were on that list and thought, oh, that's not for me. Oh, and I know people that were put off by the ice. People that were there were telling me, oh, my so-and-so would have loved this or they didn't come or I'd have loved them to be here. But I think the ecstatic dance put them off. Or well, I think the ice, getting into the ice put them off. And the resistance is real. And we have resistance to everything. And ultimately, it's answering the call for discomfort. That, like you said, around taking responsibility. We're not going to find the answers in the comfortable. We're not going to find mm -hmm. the the sol inward solutions yeah. the healing is not going to take place by by staying comfortable with what we think we know with what we think we you know it's it's just it's not going to happen there 100 percent. Mm. yeah the magic happens outside your comfort zone 100 well it's that yeah it's that phrase that's you know but it's and you also said it we can have an intellectual conversation about this we can read the things but to embody it and to actually go through the experience of being uncomfortable and feeling it in the body and then having the alternate experience on the other side 
that's when we really know what it is to move through it. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. What does giving yourself permission look like? So when you when you have a conversation with yourself or you're faced with a difficult situation, okay, what does that look like? Is that a conversation that you have? Because I think that can be right. so valid and important. That that that. All right, am I going to mm. grant myself mm. the permission to move in this way, and just whatever happens, happens, and I'm not going to, you know, judge myself for this. I think. Um, I think it comes from checking in. What what am I serving? And th- this is what I mean about the, the spell of permission. Like, mm. if in some way what I want to do that I think I might need to ask permission for is serving my, my raison d'etre, my, my, my reason to be, my, my super objective in life, and it's not detrimentally affecting anyone else, that's really important. Mm. You know that that that. Well, well, I'm just going to do this. It's like, yeah, well, that's affecting all these other people, so it doesn't. You can't. You can't really do that. Mm. What does it look like? It, it involves checking in. Um, yeah, checking in. Uh, <laughs> like, do I need to ask permission? Yeah. First of all, most of the time we don't. No. Mm. It's just patterning. 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 Talk to us about patterning. Patterning. Okay. Well, my my new channel and website and. Your mission. Mission. My <laughs> mission is what it is. Well, the the brand is pattern matters mm. um, because um, I look at the world and all I see is patterns in matter. Mm. Um, from from the trees, they play out particular tree type patterns that grow generally up and yeah. root themselves down uh, and take <coughs> nutrients and then share nutrients amongst each other as well. Like you know, there's, there's patterns we don't see the trees do. Um, water flows in a particular pattern. There's patterns everywhere. We are vessels that mm-hmm. take in patterns, and then we replicate those patterns out. Mm-hmm. Now, many of those patterns, well, up to a certain age, you don't get to choose. You just take them all in. You take them in. Influence. It flows in. That's what it means. Influence mm. flows in. Now, as we get older and wiser, hopefully, and where we're... Maybe we're on this kind of a journey at the moment, and I think a lot of the people that came to the 100... Uh, human experience are on this sort of journey of like what patterns do I want in and what do I want out Mm. what do I not want to take on and what are the new patterns there that that I might be able to take on and who's got them (laughs) and cool and so let's share these patterns I got some of these I got ah cool I'll take some of those you know I'm going to let go of those ones because I didn't need those Um, and so so some of the facilitation was really about you guys really helped I think let go of patterns uh, but also find new patterns, maybe shapes, um, and until we like, yeah, uh, until we actually start stepping outside of the play and looking at the play that we're in, we don't realise that we're just playing out patterns. Mm. Um, yeah, are these patterns your own? Mm. Where yeah. are they coming from? I guess that's a big one. Where are well, these they generally come from p- parents and society. I think in general, that starts. That's how they start off. Mm. Um, yet yeah, and and the patterns are probably really useful at some point in time yet time like context and time changes as we know you can have mm-hmm. a particular plan structure but it has to change if we're living in in reality mm-hmm. which we are in the same way that you don't see any trees that like are just perfectly straight up towards the light why because they got to like do this and they got to do that oh that got in the way i've just got to do this now and they don't make a drama out of it they just go okay where is it okay that way you would have loved rooted beings in the Wellcome Collection, uh, free museum opposite Euston, London, and it's Henry Wellcome. Do you know Henry Wellcome? I don't know. Him uh, personally, one of the biggest yeah. collection yeah. of patterns. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, the rooted beings. It's got a simple exhibition, but they've got like uh, plant medicines and stuff, which is more like what what teachings and and how do people use these kind of roots of plants and things like that but really very powerful to have that in a london museum is mm. quite quite uh i guess yeah interesting um but uh there was one exhibition piece it was just a television it was a it was a production of a of someone in the and it was all about time and how we relate to time if time was sped up, for example, 
you would see uh, life and death of certain things would be invisible because it happened so quick. I'm talking like if like a thousand years was as in a second, mm. but you'd see patterns of trees and certain different, you know, megafauna and stuff like shape shifting and you'd see it in a different way mm. and it would be constantly moving. So like our relationship to time is very different to what it could be. So, like, what we don't see and what we do see is all about that that, ta- that yeah. period of time. Yeah. So, it was basically th- on the on the the production of this this person moving in different ways, like uh, a tree would in um, in the forest, but but very like sped up, and it was really really captivating. Um, and it, they related it back to the time in COVID and lockdown, and like how time kind of also changed and how we looked at things was different. Um, I guess it's going back to kind of like the nature side of stuff. Mm. But yeah, it's interesting. I love I love your your the piece that you just said on, on patterns. I think it's such a no, it's another way in to view the world. I love the different lenses to how we can see the world and just even that like time or, or, or seeing it in terms of patterns and and what things are forming in different ways and why. And it it, it goes deeper than that as well mm-hmm. because language goes far deeper than we are often aware of mm-hmm. our ancestors who made language really saw the world with deep meaning imbued in it we've kind of forgotten that yet it, the, the residue is still in the language and we can look at it and find it if we're curious because often it's like the, the playful childlike part of me goes oh i wonder what that means i wonder where that came from and then i, f- I find out it's exactly where I thought it came from. Like I'll find path. Like I look at patterns such as pattern and matter. Well, oh, that's interesting. Like we talk about Mother Earth, don't we? Matter, and then I look. Oh, matter does come from the Latin of mother. Okay, so matter, the mother, like th- what we live in, is the feminine aspect of creation, according to our ancestors who gave us the gift of language, which is what we used to communicate from this consciousness to that. <laughs> it's deep, right? So the matter of our being, this is the matter of my being. And then I was like, m- t- pattern, paternal, I wonder if that is connected. Yes, it bloody is as well. That's mm. interesting. And then I was like, well, what is a pattern? And then I was like, what is a pattern? A pattern is a shape um, to be replicated. And so the, the idea of like the paternal aspect, God the Father, paternal. is the pattern that gets replicated in matter. So when the masculine comes together with the feminine, you get creation. And this is just a Wednesday afternoon. It's just a Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> <Of> <laughs> We've lost con- concept of time. We've lost concept of time and all this pattern. Oh, that. no, I just meant your Wednesday afternoon. I didn't mean now. You meant your random this Wednesday is just afternoon, your, just like, diving just into... Diving into, like, understanding why the world is Welcome how to it my is. mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It might I have been that. Saturday when you came out of the rabbit hole, you went down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But the point being is, mm. for life to come together, there's there's one thing that is a pattern, and there's one thing that makes it into matter. And like whether it's like the sperm and the egg, <laughs> like there's mm. the guy's basically done once he's delivered the instructions, mm. and the woman has to do all the bloody work, <laughs> 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 like and create it into matter. The, the instruction is Ooh. on that level, like it's an X or a Y, basically. Uh, there you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you know no. that the uh, sperm tail moves in spirals? That does not surprise me at all, Nina. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. It That's moves cool. in, the, it's a moving in a spiral. Yeah. It's not like a, you know, a, woo, a, yeah. a sort of, it's a, it's a, it's a spiral movement. So there's a lot in spiral. I could go, I could talk about spirals for hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whether it's our DNA, the galaxy we live in, mm. um, or the fact that they are the, the perfect balance of kind of what the, the ancient symbols for the masculine is like the straight line, point A to point B, direct. Whoosh, and then for the feminine is a circle which kind of encompasses and brings together brings things into a whole mother earth is a circle masculine is about movement change and then the feminine is about the kind of bringing in and and receiving and remembering as well now the two together yeah create a spiral and so that is where we are always moving forward. We're not ending up in the same place, but we're kind of we're coming back to remember. We're like change and remember, change and remember. And if we just do go in circles, we end up in the same place. And if we're just kind of running off in one direction, we don't remember the real gold that actually mm. is to be 
to be brought back. Yeah, that's again back to the experience on the weekend for me. Is that I, I keep? Oh, this is nothing. This is nothing new. It's like it's it, it's a yearning. It's a craving for those connections. Those remembering of why we are the way we are and understanding that at a very uh, through an, a very evolutionary lens like it's so important to keep remembering because that is what is going to help us thrive right. and in a new way of course it needs to be um integrated into our into our new way of being in in the world but it's so so important just to go back to to those core things i remember throughout lockdown it's all i was craving was like a fire and like to be out outside and that was like how interesting is that the only thing i'm craving is like one of the core fundamental things that has been around since you know since like we really shifted our evolution mm. and i just think that's like so pure well, and again back to the weekend that's what was tended to the fire was at the mm. center of the whole event the breathing, Tony wanted everybody to keep returning to the fire. Have the experience, come back to the fire. Have the experience, come back to the fire. The fire of, of you know, letting go at the fire, warming up by the fire, collective around the fire, singing around the fire, moving around the fire. Mm. Um, it was, and, and the fact that it kept burning the whole time, even through mm. the night when everyone was, was sleeping. Needed burning through it, the night, didn't it? <laughs> for everyone to stay warm for those that didn't sleep um but that's, that's on per, on patterns and matter mm -hmm. you know it's then learning and being curious about the patterns that matter yes right so then that's how we begin to make more conscious choices we begin to shift out of old patterns and habits or the things that we did do or the stories that we told ourselves and we repeat the patterns that matter in a direction i suppose as you say like in the spiral to to begin to lead a life in more humanness accepting the mess of life and um and and living living for you know more in the heart and more and a well life and in more health a healthy a healthier life in connection to and symbiosis with nature and one another and so yeah i just wanted to kind of bring that back to pattern your sort of the the vision the vision that you have and and patterns that matter you're 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 so right and you, you've touched upon something else yeah we've got so this is what cu i'm curious about with the english language so we've got a word that means mother that also means everything that the world's made of and it also means the things that we f say are really important mm. like what matters you know mm. well what's the matter mm. we, we can also say it's something that's the, uh, an issue mm. but it's it's really I like the way you said it. It's it's kind of, it's tending to because if if we go back to that idea of patterns and matter and paternal being the the father aspect, let's just see it as the seed, right? Mm. So a seed, like the patterns that the we we have to nurture them basically. So it's like we tried some out on the weekend and fantastic. Now the important thing is like how do we bring these into our lives? Mm -hmm. That's the really important thing that uh, that is the work for all of the hundred humans to do. It's mm -hmm. like what? Do, okay, what were the patterns that I learned? Because actually, it it it, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Literally, the material act of getting into a night. Oh, I don't have a nice bath. I can't do it. It's like really, you don't have any situations that are hard that you come up against in life where you want to run away. Oh, those, yeah, good, okay. <laughs> yes. So, so it's like how do we tie it to the material? Mm -hmm. But we find the pattern that we can apply to all the different. Mm -hmm material mm. instances of it and it's really important to go d deep and not say oh we did this and we did that and we did that great what did you do oh, well i released some of my fucking ancestral wounds yeah. great you did that good <laughs> you can do that in many ways you can either go into the womb tomb and do it or you can you know what what's another way like i've 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 realized that, that what like what what you guys um do and are promoting is really fucking important that the physical release mm -hmm to express physically and I've had it before when I've like dealing with a bloody not a bloody we're dealing with another human being who was was playing the role 
of uh, uh, of uh, within a corporate entity which was renting me a car. Okay, <laughs> but the corporate entity had particular values that didn't realign with my human values, and probably not with the person who was playing that role. But she was acting them out anyway, and it drove me nuts. And like, I didn't have my credit card. I had to buy the full insurance, and I was like, and but she could. I had the, all the details. She could have done it for mm. me but it was like no computer says no and i was like okay i could feel everything rising up inside me and it was like toxicity but i realized this is not against this human being who's in front of me mm. i'm feeling myself filled with the toxic policies that this corporate entity has programmed into this human who's now delivering to me and it's filling my being and I can feel it mm. and I was like okay can I do anything or not and I tried with words and it's like cool right okay I need to re I need to let go and it's fine it's going to cost me this much money fine I did but then and I did the thing walked away but I could still feel it in me I could still feel mm. and then I got in a lift and I was like please let me be on my own and then like someone came in last minute I was like okay well, you know how's it going <laughs> sort of just like held space they got off for the next next thing the lift went close and I just went <laughs> and I sent it into the ground I was like ah oh, and I forgive you human <laughs> you know it's like like the human being that was acting in that role mm. I don't want to have hate towards them because they probably hate their fucking job they probably need the commission there's many different things that mm. they were acting from and it, I could really really easily just Them nurtured all. that hate like all the time mm. be like do you know what there's itch did to me in the you know and, and then propagating that and then creating that nastiness and watering that seed and oh look at this nasty bush that I'm growing that I want to show everyone it's like <laughs> really, really for, <laughs> for what you want sympathy there yeah or, or there's some deep seated mm. emotion within you that wants some you know it's like a, the unfair or mm. the, 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 the you want like love in that situation yeah mm. which you're not getting and now I only ever use that scenario because it was one time when I was able to transcend everything that was going in me and I didn't act out with the character of like uh, pissed offness because I realised when those characters take us over it's not us I've just been possessed by something and what I've been possessed by was that company's policies it's like oh I don't want that keep your policies mm. not having that toxic shit like whatever I'll focus on the next thing. Because <laughs> if I keep nurturing that blanket of woe and fucking weaving it, I'm like, oh, do you want to help me weave this? Yeah. You yes. know, it's like I'm not actually focusing on where the next abundance might come from. Right. It's the misery <laughs> cycle. We can <laughs> keep playing the misery cycle yeah. or the victim cycle yeah. or the... Yeah. And then yeah. suddenly we realise that that's not serving you. But even then, if you go even deeper, the corporate entity that creates the policies, often the policies are there from a from a a root or a seed of profit mm -hmm. not people mm. and the body feels that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah the human people right. feel that You're right. but they still need to they operate they still need to operate and they still need to function and they still need to employ and then you know they those people that are given those roles that you talked about earlier with like you know they they are given a role and they have to adapt to that role and you were talking about trees growing in a certain pattern and then you're given this job that then you have these hmm. these different values, values you have that you have to you have your personal values and then your company values which yes. you you adopt and mm. if they go too far you might leave but, but you might not know your own values and this is where you know mm. when often humans well, are told well that's why i think corporations mm. tell the story of what it is to be human now and it's not people telling the story right. which kind of comes back to probably something you you've said a lot you've already said it earlier <laughs> um and that thing that that we did you say corporations i just want to recap on that corporations teaching people to be human yeah what it is to be wow. human you know like what is the good stories for you. it it's it's psychology isn't it it's it's it's, it's deep rooted and it's probably transitioned within the last mm. you know few decades really and it, it is, it's that corporations. You feel like you're having a, a, a moment, which I did when I heard that. It's capitalism. No, well, yeah, well, you get it. But then and when media. you see it through that, well, who's telling, who's used to tell the story? It'll be your elders. It'll be these people. Mm. I don't look to my mum and dad anymore to tell me what it is to be human. Right. It's like corporations, it's businesses. Yeah. It's own, and they are their own entities. It's like, you're right to say that because I see big business as its own organism 
and it's go moving in a direction yes. that we don't really have any, right. all the people there have any control over. It's like it's moving in a direction because mm-hmm. it's got so big and it's its own organism. Yeah. And it's it's so interesting to to know that something that everyone agrees upon, because it is a, it's you know, this is in a beautiful analogy of this was the um, Peugeot company in uh, Johan, I don't know what's his name. Um, yeah, in Sapiens, when he talks about this kind of that shared belief is so mm. important to, to know what you, you your shared beliefs are, mm. because that can carry something yeah. in a direction which is so detrimental to perhaps the wider or, or even the inner um, circle of people. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, all the I guess all these different perspectives in which you can look at look at life. But uh, yeah. We've got to be careful who's who's saying what these days, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if you have, if you are abiding by or tuning into or turning on the television that tells a vision, right, with your words. Television, smith- nice. Yeah. I have haven't you heard that one. Ooh. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, it tells a vision yeah. of what it is to be a citizen, a citizen at this time on Earth. And we are, you know, like we're told what shapes we need to be and yep. what it is to tick those boxes. It informs you. Right. It mm. informs you Inform. with the form you mm. need to be. And to be how right. How to conform. Mm. Con means with like chili, con carne. Mm. So it's how you with. how you become like mm. the form that they want you to be. Mm-hmm. Information, mm-hmm. if you look it up, there's two definitions. One says it's like words and stuff, but it, it's actually a process. You go through a process of information, of being informed how they want you to be formed. Like the cast, Mm. these casts work well within this picture. So if we could all just look like that and act like that, that would be great. But what we've been talking about, the 100 human experience, is about transformation. Mm. It's about saying, this is the form that I am and I want to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it fucking is. Mm. But I'm not going to listen to someone telling me what it is. I'm going to do the opposite of tell, which is let. Mm. Tell. Let it happen. <laughs> to let it happen through the process. To trust the process, mm. as Tony said. And, um, and let go. Trust the process. Let respect the process. Go. Let go. Be patient whilst in the process. Yeah. And then just realize it all is process. Or you are the process. But but so is much that it's Nina about edit? no no that's what Tony says. Oh, you are the process. You, you are, are the process. process. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It is process. You are, it is the spiral. You are information mm. constantly, all the time, yeah. constantly being informed and then transforming. Mm. And yet they want fixed forms because it's like if everyone would act like that, we'd know where they were and they wouldn't move if we looked that you know mm. if we look that direction, they'll continue doing mm. what we want and they can feed the corporate entities and their virtues um, because. Yeah, I could go off from <laughs> that. was great. But there's v- but virtual reality is something that's really fucking important to to talk about. Actually, mm. sorry about swearing, but um, we're being ushered into virtual reality, mm-hmm. right? and we think that it's the metaverse and it's out there. But virtual it's been means for a while. that which contains particular virtues. Mm. Okay, virtues are values, but they are always positive. A virtue, virtuous, right? Mm. It's always about so. And this is what's really important, because to look at the virtues of a company, you're like, well, they're not virtues, are they? They're values. It's like, well, they think they're virtues. Profit is a virtue to anyone who's on the on the board. Mm-hmm. You know, screwing me out of my last few quid at, when I'm at the desk is not really a virtue. But it, the virtues are in the eye of the beholder. Mm. What are your objectives? What mm. do you want to achieve? Mm. Most companies, the objective is growth. Mm-hmm. and zero consequence mm. or l- let's not take the consequence into account that doesn't happen in nature well th- there is a name it's called cancer but it doesn't naturally occur mm. we've sort of brought that about mm-hmm. um, yeah nothing's and attacking and itself yeah and it, it's in a mindset and it also yeah it manifests in the foods that we that we feed people mm-hmm. as well so virtual reality virtual reality well what I'm saying is we don't need to go into a headset and all this stuff to step into a virtual reality mm. just look at the world you're living in right now mm-hmm. and the virtues that we're supposed to adhere to mm-hmm. well they're values but like, we can debate whether they're virtue whether they're virtues or not mm. Mm. and mm-hmm. we live in these these nested levels of virtues mm. and like you know a 
good good woman does this and a good man does this on a basic level and good citizen does this. A good this. citizen does this. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. And policing is by consent. It's like, really? Can I get to like say no? No, you don't. But you've consented. But what? Do, what <laughs> do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, how, what does that mean? Does that mean that I can say no? No, it doesn't. Mm. But it's by consent. But by whose then? Mm. <laughs> like all these things that they just put in a box. It's like mm. I want to go open that box and look at that because mm-hmm. it's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And again, it's a more. It's like what we believe on. What we believe. What we choose to to sh- shared that belief mm. yeah. but, but no one's looking at why mm. and so I, I truly think that the only solution is what's already happening and it's what you guys are already doing mm-hmm. and, and it's happening in different places that nodes of awareness are growing mm. and hum- life comes together the many into the one like you are many different things in one mm-hmm. there's like a whole microbiome in me and mm-hmm. there's a whole like universe in my gut that's got shit to say you know um, there's different parts of me that want different things. So I'm a collection of many things, but that scales up as well. Mm-hmm. When a hundred humans get together, your frequency, your frequency, your frequency, like we can get closer to a full spectrum of light mm-hmm. when there's all these different spectrums mm-hmm. coming together. And shadow. And shadow. Well, th- yeah, the, the light will then shine, the, like when we get in the way of it, we're like, oh, and that shadow as well, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> but it's like bringing the different colors of light first. But just to, w- just to welcome that. Yeah. To be able to to, well, obviously we facilitate the ecstatic dance and to dance with, you know, the sun came out and there was my shadow and that was something that being able to to be with the shadow, to be with yeah. the dark aspects, to be, you know, to be with it so that we can not avoid it, not distract from it. I always think that, that the things that are happening out there in, in, the, in life that, you know, whether we're sat distracted watching our screens or our tellies, you know, that, that is all, it is a distraction because stillness and being alone with ourselves is something that, you know, there was a period in my life that I was scared to be on my own. Like I really did not want to be alone. It was like filling my schedule, being around people all the time. Have we become comfortable with our, mm. our, in, our individual self? And then, and then that's you know it's an it's an interesting it's an interesting thing to recognise what we what what we've been, you know, conditioned, um, or informed, or t- you know, taught to go to when 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 the discomfort or when that those sensations arise mm. for us, you know. I really like what you've talked about about yeah the discomfort um, because I think yeah you said have we become comfortable with ourselves and and I don't know. If there's any, uh, I think it's about how much can we fully embrace mm. ourselves yeah. and everything that's happening. Mm. Yeah, that I guess because being comfortable because is like you've arrived somewhere. And actually, like l- like Nina was saying, that that the discomfort comes in order for change to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and the analogy that I sort of use is if we're all sitting on a sofa with a beautiful warm blanket, lovely fire, watching the best Netflix show we like. We've just had a wonderful meal. Uh, everything is just perfect and it's candle lit, right? Mm. There's no motivation to do anything. Mm. Nothing needs to change. Mm. That's why I feel like this. And at some point, someone opens a window. I need to move. I won't move unless I feel uncomfortable. Mm. But w- most humans, and from a lot of my mm. life, we're at the stage of like, I feel this. This is really bad. Wh- why am I feeling this? And I'm this. I'm this. Oh, I'm this. And it's like, no, no, no. It's <laughs> It's like it's like a car identifying as the fuel light when it goes on. It's like <laughs> no, a bit of you just lit up to like mention something that maybe action needs to happen. Oh right, like I'm not the fuel light. No, no, you're not. You just need to take actions. Oh good, yeah. and then it goes on. Oh right. Ah. <laughs> yeah, you'll feel hungry again. Yeah, and that's a discomfort. But it's like we use the word to describe the thing, mm. but the thing is within you, and it's part of being. And mm. then one of the, the challenges I think that we all have as individuals, as friends, and as we relate to our families, it's like, well, how much do you want to transform? Yeah. How, like, how, how much do you as an individual want to transform? Mm-hmm. What are the limits of that? And and is everyone okay with that? Mm. <laughs> like, Is everyone okay with me doing this when I'm really angry rather than just going... I'm really angry, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's just like, what if I just want to do that, like in public? And are you embarrassed about that? Are you, mm. you know, 
And it's like, great, you are. Well, cool. Work on that then. <laughs> <'Cause> well, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I and mean? Breaking out of the mold. Because like you just said, <laughs> as we in. begin to transform, yeah. it can have a an impact or a or a ripple effect on those people around us. And sometimes we've been cast into these molds, into these roles, whether that's within a work scenario or within our family system or within our friendship circles. And we often carry the identity of the role of the of the mold and then if we're transforming or we're changing or we're living out these new patterns and new ways of living to embody more wellness and we are changing and that can have a, a sort of impact on the people around us and often that can feel like there's resistance coming from around us like well if you're and you know I said be. recently to a friend you know what would it be like in your family system if you were well? If you weren't the chaos or the mess or the, the way that you feel about yourself, but to the other people in your family, the role that you play, that cast that you've given yourself, what would that be like for the other people's perception of you? How comfortable would they feel with you being more grounded or being more embodied or being more sort of in flow and in alignment how would it be for them yeah it'd probably shine a light on their things right when when you are in that way perhaps well they might make them feel uncomfortable and then that's a impetus to it's a calling isn't it is it it's a okay i'm feeling uncomfortable because i'm seeing you and your power in rising that's making me feel oh what parts of myself am i not this sounds like a really conscious way of looking at it, yeah. Sure. <laughs> and, I, and I love that you are looking at it that way. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like what I way are you looking at it? Well, I, I like to see I'm seeing it in the same way. It's just that uh -huh. not everyone does. No. Like, not everyone's sure. got that reflectiveness of like, of like they'll just be like, just you've words. changed and I don't like it. Yeah. Like A lot of the time, it's like the fact they won't be like, do you know what? I'm feeling uncomfortable because yeah. I see you in your power and now it's reflecting on like, mm. and even myself, I'm not that conscious in the moment. Sure. No. I, I was I was at a men's event like a couple of weeks before I met you guys and I couldn't understand why there was like two particular guys that I was just avoiding because energetically my body couldn't really be in their spheres. Mm. Yeah. Despite them being That's like come up a lot. Despite them for, for you, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. So it's I find I found it really interesting because and I don't know the solution is always different for each individual mm -hmm. and sometimes it's like I get someone's energy it's like okay they need to stay there because <laughs> I got an idea of what that is you know mm. but this time it was like no because I, I actually want to connect but mm, something's stopping mm. me and then uh, I I n noticed it well I named it first I went up to Ben and I was like Ben I don't know what, I'm feeling this so I just want to like scurry into the corner and hide from you I don't know what that's about mate <laughs> so yeah. he's that. like that's there you go it's <laughs> an opportunity <laughs> isn't it to like just face that and be like right uh, you make me really uncomfortable so I want to spend more time with you yeah I've tried to do that in the last couple of years of like people who don't agree with me okay you don't <laughs> I don't agree with you so I want to learn from you or like learn your way mm. uh, podcasts that I don't agree with I'm like I. Yeah, developed like a healthy uh, relationship to like listening to them and stuff but yeah I think Jordan Peterson says people think people have different opinions they mm. don't they have entirely different ways of seeing the world mm. Mm. and if we can get over like oh his opinion is this and it's yeah. like no how do you see it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's real for you let me get behind those eyes didn't and, like, you do some sort of analogy of like we're seeing the same thing, but I can't see it from your angle. Oh what yeah. does it look like from around there? Cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, exactly. Like, it's like say that's reality, you yeah. know, and and you're, you've got a really clear vision of what reality mm. looks like, and you've got a really clear. Yeah, one yeah. I'm like like this. There's definitely no handle on. Yeah, exactly. that's what I was gonna say. You, you haven't got a handle. I've got a handle on reality. Yeah. Have <laughs> <laughs> you got a handle? I've got a handle on reality. <laughs> there is no handle. I've there lost is it. No There's handle. no handle no. on my reality. <laughs> it's a floating island. <laughs> But I think someone mentioned the, the elephant experiment. I did, yeah. yeah you mentioned yeah. that. Why don't you say it? Because I think that's a really good one. So yeah. I think it's a, a story in Vipassana, uh, the you know what, teaching of a mm -hmm. Essen Goenka, who's like so powerful in that in that world. But he talks all these stories. Something came up earlier that I wanted to touch upon. It was a story that he said. It was something about the Buddha and that someone came with him with a gift, and then he didn't want the gift. 
So he said, no, I'm not receiving it. And, you know, and it was someone like that had their opinion. And he was like, how can you, and it was something on, you said earlier about like, just you've come with your stuff and I'm kind of separate to that. I'm not receiving it and I don't want to take that on board. But yeah, the, the, the story that you just mentioned about seeing things through different reality, every, it was like a blind, it's like four uh, blind people in the village and they're touching the same thing. It's an elephant, but they see it. Oh, it's a big trunk. Oh, it's a tree. It's a tree shape. And then the other person's got the tail and it's like, oh, it's a, it's a it's a snake it's a snake it's like a snake and then uh someone's got the trunk and it's like a you know something else <laughs> but yeah they're all got the handle on the same thing and, and one's got the the, the ear isn't yeah, it it's like a got banana leaf or something it's like mm-hmm. yeah god knows how they know what other these other things are but but <laughs> but i think the interesting thing about it is how adamant they are that they know exactly what this mm. thing is yeah. and are willing to be like you are an idiot I, absolute bullshit I know my reality I felt this uh-huh. it's like and they might end up killing each other yeah. or like or saying you, we're going to draw this line there and you can the be elephant. you can be with the kind of tree trunk banana leaf people and we're going to be with the, the, the python like mm. rope <laughs> people mm. of reality and that's what reality is it's like really maybe we could zoom out and yeah oh. or, or <laughs> they're they're pulling each part of reality closer to them and at the end they're destroying the thing that it belongs to right. so they're pulling each part of it and destroying the thing that they're all connected to right, right. Mm. which but could also be another story yeah it's the it's the want to be right but the want to be seen really the root of it the is the seen, want right. to be seen and to be heard mm. that y- what you are seeing and what you are hearing or what you are touching or what you are, the way that you are perceiving to be right. Um, Rather than this kind of curiosity of right. like, do you know what I saw? Th- that's really interesting because I felt this. That's really curious. Mm. Well, come on then. We can't mm. be looking at the same thing. Mm. Maybe if we join them together, what does it mm-hmm. look like? Mm-hmm. And actually yeah. the acceptance Rather of like, no. all of the... <laughs> It's acceptance of difference. But again, we're not conditioned that way, are we? We're not conditioned in our entire human yeah, history. Yeah, because right is rewarded. Yeah. And really, but equal, your right is not my right. Right is rewarded by somebody's definition of right. Then there is the consistent delivery of us and them narratives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we've had that throughout entire histories. There is good, yeah. bad. There is, there is the right, there is wrong, there is this group of people, there is that group of people. Right. Yeah, if you don't agree with me, I'll chop your head off. Mm. Um, and ultimately, it is an, in the past of our human kind, that was the, that was the case. It was as, yeah. as serious as that, and it was delivered in a certain way so that we buy into those stories of separateness. And really, ultimately the journey of this the exploring humanness the journey inward the journey to transform beyond we always arrive at the same thing that we are all one matter as you were saying earlier when you zoom in to matter and you keep zooming and you keep zooming you know scientists are looking to zoom into everything everything is nothing Nothing, you arrive at nothing. Matter becomes nothing. It's, it's empty space. It's empty it? space. There's more empty space in you and me than anything else. Mm. And so ultimately you realize that you are nothing and everything at this exact same time. Mm-hmm. And and interestingly, there's a, I, I need to like slightly move my legs to show. Sure. Oh, yeah, just getting old. Um, <laughs> hopefully I'm still in frame. Um, Donald D. Hoffman is a cognitive scientist in somewhere on the west coast of America. And um, he's written a, go- a book called The Case Against Reality. Mm. Um, and uh, he's working with a load of mathemat- mathematicians to prove that we're just kind of walking around in an interface, really, mm-hmm. basically. Like a screen, um, s- desktop screen. Yeah, it's like the universe is basically an assemblance of information that allows different conscious agents to communicate with one another. Mm-hmm. Wow. Right, so there's a conscious agent there, there's a conscious agent here, and it's like I, I can kind of get a, a read on what's going on for you by the interface that I'm that I'm dealing with, but actually I don't really know, you know, because like sometimes we can like smile and it's like I don't know what's 
go, really going on. Mm. So all we deal mm. with is an interface. Mm. And so we're never really dealing with true reality. In mm. the same way that, go back to the car thing, when the fuel light's on, there's not, I don't know anything. The only thing I know is that the fuel light's on. It might point to the fact that the fuel's low, but actually, I don't know. It could be faulty. The only thing I know <laughs> is what I see, mm. you know. Um, mm. Mm. Where am I going with this? Um, that, yes, when he was, like, looking mathematically, okay, if it is just information and if this, this is just an interface, then how would it all be stored? Mm. And so we looked into how hard drives are stored, and you can get more and more storage with more... Y you don't get more storage with more space. You get more storage with more surface area. Mm. The more surface area that you have, you can store more information on ones and zeros. Lines and circles. Mm. Which makes spirals. Um, uh, now, in if you get a sphere, and then you look at the, s the, the, circum the how much area is on it, you could actually get more area if you've got four smaller spheres and put them inside that. They still take up the same space, but there's more surface area. But if instead of doing that, you got one of those and you put smaller ones inside that, and you put smaller ones, it goes infinitely small, down to like a mustard seed or smaller, right? Jesus said the kingdom of heaven exists in a mustard seed. Oh, really? Now, what this guy is saying <laughs> is, that's the size of it, you know. <laughs> what this guy's saying is that actually... You don't need space for a universe. You need information. Mm. Mm. And you can store more and more information on the smallest thing possible. <laughs> it just goes infinitely small mm. until it's nothing. So I'm just saying this because it's of what you said. It's like everything and nothing. Mm -hmm. And that was when I did, um, I did Magic Mushrooms once. And I remember that being uh, a very... That was the only thing that I could experience. It was like, it's like everything and nothing all at the same time. Mm. It's like the universe is teeming with life. And then I paused, like, what's actually going on? <laughs> nothing. But everything was just a second ago. And I'm sure it still is. <laughs> if I tune in. <laughs> <laughs> I and love anyway, that. Yeah, a bit of a tangent there. Mm. But apparently, mathematically speaking, if the universe is information, it needs to be infinitesimally small, not infinitely large yeah no wow. i think it's that's a great analogy really mm. um let's wrap it up and we'll talk about um just an integration that we're gonna take from the experience mm. and then integrate it can be small infinitely or it can be big infinitely meta or <laughs> from this experience from the 100 from the weekend yeah, yeah something cool. that we've taken and and we'll we, we will integrate mm. who wants to go first I'll go first. Hmm. So, the letting go was the biggest for me, I think. Using that every breath is an, uh, is an opportunity to let go of something. Uh, and it can be that potent. And it all it needs to be is that. Just the breath out. You know, your next state change is a, a breath out away. 